Well, there are a lot of uh, EV trucks, electric trucks, we should say. Electric trucks, ETs? Uh, yes, ETs. There are ETs. a lot of ETs uh, coming our way, seemingly out of nowhere. It used to be like just a bunch of rumors, and now we seem to have a really crowded marketplace, right? I mean, it's only the best-selling vehicle segment in the country. It's, <laughs> it's totally strange that anyone would want to compete in it. So in, in this video, we're gonna go through what we know and what we think you should know about the current system. Hey, current? Yeah. Yeah. The current crop of electric trucks. The information in the news is always fresh. This video is gonna be out of date as soon as it goes live. So to stay up to date, go to edmunds.com for the most relevant information. It's how you stay plugged in. <laughs> Will, why would you want an electric pickup truck? I mean, some of it's gotta be just the image of a truck, but with the guiltless operation of an EV, right? You also get tons of torque from electric motors, which we know truck buyers absolutely love. Uh, you get quiet operation. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, there are some downsides. There are downsides. We should also mention too, the potential for having less drivetrain underneath the truck itself and greater control of each individual wheel, depending on how you've arranged the electric motors, because you can theoretically have a motor controlling each wheel, none of them connected. And that could give you like really cool wheel control if you're going off road. But well, remains to be seen and you're right about the downsides. And we'll talk about those uh, in specific circumstances where they're most relevant. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the most recent EV truck announcement, uh, the GMC Hummer EV. You gotta appreciate the irony here, right? <laughs> it's a great plan, right? I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger went from a Hummer to driving eco-friendly cars. Now he can go back to a Hummer. It is, it is the circle of life. I fully support this as a Arnold fan because you know I have the watch, you know. Uh, and uh, and I, the cell phone case. I do have too. the cell phone case too, uh, <laughs> where he's wearing the watch. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little much, but I love it. Uh, Hummer EV is a really interesting vehicle, uh, even though we don't know much about it. But you have the roots from the H1, totally rad, to the H2 and the H3, decidedly less rad. Uh, and now the specs that GM has announced for this vehicle are really impressive, although... There might be some yeah. Tesla math happening here. <laughs> you know, the numbers are huge, right? We've got a thousand horsepower, uh, claimed zero to 60 in three seconds, which is incredible. The really big number is 11,500 pound-feet of torque. That is literally a big number. That is, uh, I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> they're bigger. This 11,500 pound-feet of torque number we suspect that, uh, much like what we saw with the Tesla Roadster when they claim 10,000 newton meters of torque, it's going to be wheel torque yeah. and not motor torque. Yeah, we, we believe this is the case. We don't know if it's true or not, although we suspect it is, that uh, when you measure torque of an engine or a motor, you basically measure it at the engine or motor. When you measure it from the tire, you actually multiply it by all the gearing that happens from the motor to the tire itself. So transmission, axles, you know, uh, through that entire path. Yeah. We don't know the setup of this vehicle yet. Uh, we saw reports that GMC uh, was said it's gonna be a three electric motor setup, but we don't know what it looks like underneath yet. So our suspicion is this is just a multiplied inflated figure that the motors themselves won't be producing this. I mean, it would be just a huge coup in terms of, of technology and battery if they were actually producing that from the motor. Yeah. We did the math on this, and the thing we actually found is if you look at a diesel GMC 2500 you know, HD truck, that's right. in first gear, it produces more wheel torque. It yeah. produces a little over 14,000 pound-feet, if we got that right. Tell us in the comments if we didn't. <laughs> um, so to give some perspective on that number, it's still going to be significant, but it's not necessarily going to be as, as world-shattering as this press release and the ad that they showed would suggest. Either way, I'm interested and excited to see what this Hummer EV looks like. We've seen reports that the Hummer EV will go on sale as early as 2021, but we'll kind of see how that materializes. Yeah, I mean, right now, General Motors sells exactly one electric car in the United States. That's the Bolt, and it is about as far as you can get from a Hummer. It shows like how much the perception of EVs has changed. GM was first to market with an electric vehicle, EV1, right? And that idea has kind of floated around as this is what EVs look like. They're kind of dorky commuter cars. But thanks to the next manufacturer we'll talk about, like they can be cool and they are <laughs> cool now. Uh, so let's talk about the Tesla Cybertruck. Oh man, the truck from the future, right? Uh, you, you, a, you a big Blade Runner fan? I, I love Blade Runner. I've watched Blade Runner 2049 more times than I care to admit. Uh, but can you just admire the audacity of naming a truck Cybertruck and then making it look like this? I think we're probably biased on this. Uh, 
I don't think either of us has a problem with the way this looks. I, I think it'd be great to see something like that rolling around on the road. I have a lot of other questions, though. <laughs> we should say, too, before we go on and talk about the Cybertruck itself, before you call us, you know, uh, what, biased or anything. Tesla Q. We owned more Teslas than most people. <laughs> this company has bought a Model S, a Model X. We have bought two Model 3s. We traded our Model 3 in in January, and we have a new one, which you'll see more about soon. We have a Model Y on order, and we have a deposit down on the Cybertruck. We are Tesla customers. We've given them so much more money than you have. Don't add it up. <laughs> uh, and the specs of the Cybertruck on paper, if this all becomes true, are super compelling, right? They're really impressive. I mean, it's what you expect from Tesla, right? You've got ranges from 250 miles to 500 miles, got acceleration figures from six and a half seconds to 2.9 seconds for a big truck. That's insane. You've got big towing capacity numbers, right? 7,500 to 14,000 pounds of, of claimed towing capacity. Yeah. These are huge numbers. And this is roughly the size of an F-150 and a, versus a comparable vehicle. The bed is about a foot longer too, which is all really neat on paper. I think what we've realized with EVs is some of the practicalities of getting these figures are a little bit more troublesome. We had our own uh, towing saga yes. with our Model X. Yeah, we right? put Model X has a decent tow rating. We put a very lightweight trailer on it and did a tow test with it, and it was, uh, I mean, a nightmare, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. Uh, our range, like, got cut in half. I mean, this thing was, if not further, this thing was struggling to get, you know, just barely over 100 miles to from yeah. charging station to charging station. Uh, and the person who was driving it, the editor who was driving it, had to go really slow too. And because you have to, if you have a big battery, you have to spend a lot of time charging it. So when you see a, like a truck has a 500 mile range, that's really compelling until you start needing to fill it and then you realize how much time you have to spend at a charging station. And, and that is assuming that the charging station is gonna be easy for you to access with a trailer, right? A lot of these charging stations are made for a car to drive up and, and plug in and they don't really have the, the space or the layout to let something that's all of a sudden twice as long or even more than twice as long pull through uh, and get easy access to a charger. We've had to unhook the trailer, drive in and charge. And that's a, gonna be a big pain in the butt when you have a 10,000 pound trailer, you know, which is right in the middle of, of that vehicle's capability. I'm also curious to see how uh, they're gonna do with, with payload because they're claiming up to 3,500 pounds of payload, which is like a heavy duty figure. And here's the thing, heavy duty trucks, don't ride great because they have such a high payload. Uh, Tesla says this has four corner air suspension, that may help, but you know, again, this thing comes real. Yeah, and we don't see that operating on a lot of heavy duty trucks. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see how the implementation comes off and, and how it can actually deal with the sort of work element of being a truck. We should say we are very aware that not everybody buys a truck to work. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've seen there have been studies, plenty of truck owners tow one time a year or less. Uh, you know, a lot of people just love trucks for the image, for the versatility, for, for having a bed if they need it. Mm -hmm. So for those buyers, this transition to electric will probably be a lot easier. The question is gonna be, can they also capture some yeah. of the work market? If not, they'll at least be able to brag about it when they're talking to their friends, which is an important part of being a car enthusiast, right? Like, yeah. oh yeah, I can tow this. I never do, but I could. <laughs> uh, but you touched on briefly the uh, exoskeleton construction aspect of it, right? And some things that you should be aware of when you're looking forward to your Cybertruck. Yeah, I mean, the thing we saw on stage definitely uh, looked a lot like concept to yes. me, right? Uh, you know, we've got the, the headlights and taillights that aren't DOT compliant. We've got no mirrors. We've got the the wheels that you could tell were probably not production wheels. Uh, so there's a lot to suggest that this is not exactly what we're gonna see on the road. The question is how much actually carries over and can a stainless steel exoskeleton really carry over? I mean, what's gonna happen to you know, maintenance and repairs when you get scratches, when you get dings? If somebody dents the body of this truck, is its structural integrity compromised? You know, how and how do repairs on that look uh, when it's part of the, the frame of the truck. And things like crash testing too, and where the crumple zones. I mean, this is stuff that Tesla is gonna have to solve. <laughs> so we're very interested to see what they come up with. It's easy, you just drive through whatever you hit, right? <laughs> That's one way to do. Uh, one thing I will be interested to test is when we when we buy ours is the bulletproof claim. Uh, they claimed it was 
uh, the steel could withstand a nine millimeter round. I will push for us to make sure it can uh, or can't. I want, <laughs> I'm really excited to find that out. And if you would like to see the same, let me know. Yeah, I'll be far away yeah. when, you, when you try that one out. Not having fun. <laughs> uh, you know, we talk about how, how Tesla changes perception and with the image of this truck, they've got really a built-in selling point. The next truck we've got to talk about is one that is going to have to deal much more with the day-to-day -day practicalities of being a pickup truck. The Ford F-150 EV, and uh, here's what we know about it. Ford's making it. <laughs> Rivian's gonna help. Yes, that's like one and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to Rivian in a minute. Yes, yeah. exactly. Ford's released a cool stunt video where the, the truck, the electric truck towed a million pounds. It, when you get into the science of how it was able to do it, it's, it's a bit less exciting, but it shows that Ford's taking this seriously, and uh, they'll have to, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Ford is selling the top selling vehicle in the country here by a wide margin. The F-150 is the vehicle most Americans buy mm -hmm. when they go out to shop, uh, and, and they have an audience across the entire country who use the truck for all sorts of different things. So they really have what is right now a consumer experience where everyone knows what to expect when they go and buy a Ford pickup truck to something that's a big question mark. Yeah. What how, is that going to look like? How Ford is going to teach these customers who have a very broad expectation of what an F-150 should be able to do, how is this EV truck going to land within that realm of expectations? That, that'll be fascinating. It'll be really interesting to see how, what they do with that because it's, it's a challenge. Uh, especially, you know, EVs, let's face it, it's a very coastal situation right now. Uh, big cities, charging, net, charging infrastructure. In the middle of the country, there is some, but definitely not as much. And unless you have a charger at home, which you should if you're going to have an EV, <laughs> if you don't have access to that, if you want to drive it further than the range would uh, permit, the charging network is going to be a big issue. Yeah, and, and beyond just access to charge points, there's also the question of weather. Uh, you know, right now in California, you can have an EV and not be too worried. If right now, forever. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have weather. <laughs> But there are parts of the country where you do, where you get snow, where you get freezing temperatures, and we know that's bad for batteries. We know that's bad for range. Mm -hmm. How uh, is Ford going to be able to address that at all? Is there anything they can, they can do with, with cooling battery conditioning while it's plugged in uh, that's going to help? I mean, how do you accept that, hey, it's winter, so I just don't have 100 miles of range, theoretically? Yeah. So, you know, uh, what's, what's the customer experience going to be like there? Uh, so we'll know more about that when the truck comes out. The charging network is also an issue, issue too, because we're Tesla owners, Tesla customers. Uh, we've experienced how broad and pleasant the supercharger network can be. It's the most, I mean, it's, that's the advantage of owning a Tesla is having access to that network. But we can also see how strained it can be during holiday weekends. Yeah. And we've also seen uh, the third party charging networks that are sort of, are, are building out rapidly, but still relatively in their infancy, like Electrify America. Uh, where the, the charging set situation is different from station to station, yeah. uh, even when the stations are very close to one another. You so don't necessarily know how much throughput you can get, uh, you know, how, much is, how fast is it actually going to be mm -hmm. able to charge your car, depending on the capabilities of your car. Yeah, there's variance. And all these co companies are working on these things. They're solving these things, and they'll have to because the customer will need <laughs> will be there. Uh, so the next few years are going to be uh, very telling for how these, these vehicles land, especially for the F-150. Let's talk about Rivian uh, because it's kind of linked to Ford, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at this point, uh, Ford invested a big stake in Rivian, uh, and we know Rivian is also going to uh, help develop a Lincoln. So there's a lot of tie up in the technology between those two companies. Um, the Rivian, the R1T, was really the first electric truck we saw floating mm -hmm. around out there, right, when we on the show circuit. And I remember being really impressed the first time I saw it. You know, Rivian has not been making big splashy headlines because they haven't been making big wild claims the way some companies might. Uh, but I think that sanity actually shows through. This has always seemed like a product you were going to be able to buy. From the first time I saw it on the show floor, I remember thinking, oh, <laughs> this is not just some wild concept. This is something that looks and feels like a vehicle I'm going to be able to drive one day. It's it's slightly more sober proposition, <laughs> right? At least by the specs. But that also shows how fast like the goalpost has moved because they still claim a zero to sixty three seconds. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like <laughs> that that is wild. <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, I agree with you. The offering that the R1T has seems the most realistic, most practical. Uh, even the price, which is high, like around $70,000, yeah. for the what you get, the capability in the truck that you get, that all makes sense. So just to run through some of the specs, uh, up to 11,000 pounds of towing capability, range from 250 to 400 miles, depending on your outfit, uh, four motors. The size is somewhere between, like it's near a full-size pickup, and there's some really neat storage options too, like all these trucks trucks will offer, like from a frunk, for example. The Rivian has uh, under bed storage and it's got that really interesting pass through between the bed and the cab uh, for snowboards and other long things, I guess, you know? Oh yeah, and the design here is something interesting too, right? They've sort of struck a middle ground between a traditional pickup truck, both in, in exterior and interior looks, and then something more extreme like what Tesla's doing, where you get something a little futuristic, a little cool, but nothing that's entirely unfamiliar on the road. R1T production supposedly happens th this year, or <laughs> later this year, so we'll be uh, excited to finally get our hands on that one and test it and run through the paces. And the SUV too, right? Oh yeah, I mean, they're using this platform to make an SUV, and that's not the only place we're gonna see this platform, right? We know uh, Ford is gonna make use of it, we know there's gonna be the Lincoln, and we even know they're making uh, delivery trucks for Amazon that's probably gonna have sort of some related underpinnings. Speaking, of another truck that is also going to share its underpinnings with an SUV. We've got the Bollinger and their B1 SUV and the B2 truck. Now we're moving more into the concepts that seem, yes, technically they'll exist, but le less mainstream, decidedly less mainstream than some of the other vehicles we've talked about. The, the, the B1 SUV, the B2 truck, I mean, these are, um, they're cool looking. I would say that, yeah. yeah I mean, They're if you love uh, old Defenders, yeah. right? Old Land Rover Defenders. Uh, yeah, if you like designers who use T-squares. Yeah. Yeah, like I do. <laughs> I think it's really cool. These have like really brutish, serious looks, but these these trucks, these SUVs are super expensive. We're talking over six figure starting price. They're they're. They're class three vehicles. They're over a certain gross vehicle weight rating where they don't need to go through crash testing. They don't need to go through EPA certification. These things are handmade. They're gonna be super low volume, as compelling as they are, right? And yeah, they sure are. But it's an interesting play because Bollinger is looking at this less as, you know, let's talk about what the truck can tow. Let's talk about it as a replacement for a work truck and more, here's a off-road vehicle, right? Here's something you wanna take out into nature. It has all sorts of uh, little neat storage capability to help you when you're overlanding or you know going camping, stuff like that. Here's a truck for the apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> so long as you can find a charge point. Oh, <laughs> I like the the pass through the front to rear idea where uh, instead of you know where the Rivian has a pass through that goes horizontally through the sideways through the vehicle, the pass through in the Bollinger's goes front to back, uh, which gives you more space of course, and it's kind of neat to look from the back and see all the way through the front as well. It's <laughs> neat. I wonder how gonna, how they're going to handle noise coming into the vehicle too. I mean, there's a lot of challenges. It's going to be loud. <laughs> yeah, and then the next one on this list is the Lordstown Motors. Endurance, uh, which they're they're taking a different approach with this truck. They're positioning it more as like a work vehicle, right? Yeah, and and that's something we haven't really talked about because that's not probably who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, very few of you, I imagine, are fleet buyers. <laughs> you can let us know if we're wrong in the comments. Please do. It's an interesting proposition to say we're going to make electric trucks for fleets. It kind of makes sense because. Those all have somewhere to live at night, you know, and, and, and so there's an opportunity for some company to build in their own charging network and, and to sort of do the math on fuel cost savings and then the expenditure for charging and whatever else and say, yes, we're making the transition to electric like Amazon is doing. I know nothing about fleet vehicle management, but I would assume, <laughs> tell me if I'm wrong, fleet managers in our, in our, our uh, comments, you would know pretty much how far these vehicles get driven in a day. Yep. You could base all your costs off that and what the charging is with the lack of uh, maintenance costs are blah 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 and I think the Lordstown Motors website actually has a handy calculator for these <laughs> people minded this way <laughs> to make this stuff happen and this vehicle is also unique they're claiming that each uh, motor is located in the hub of each wheel which is something that a lot of people in the automotive space have been talking about but we haven't actually seen in a mainstream application yet yeah I don't know how uh how nice the ride is going to be. Yeah, when you're, you're, an electric. you're <laughs> increasing the mass of each wheel effectively by a ton, but you're also <laughs> getting some benefits with regard to you know how you control that wheel, so cooling, and so on and so forth. So if and when this thing comes to market, I mean, this is going to be worth taking a close look at, even if you're just curious in EV technology. 
Yeah, this technology is changing so fast. The landscape of electric vehicles is changing so quickly. I know there are startups we didn't even touch on here, and there's sure to be plenty more and plenty more from mainstream manufacturers coming. So if you want to stay on top of all this news, the best way to do it is to head to Edmunds.com uh, for all the latest news. Also, as soon as we can drive these for ratings and reviews. I, for one, welcome our 1,000 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 3 second new truck overlords.